Now it's tailgating season and everybody's cooking chicken wings and hot dogs, but I'm in the mood for a discada. Now traditionally, a discada is cooked on a disco over an open fire, but not everybody has access to that. And so today I'm doing a discada inspired recipe on the made-in griddle. And this specifically is made-in's round carbon steel griddle. A discada is made on a disco. It kind of fry everything in the middle and push it out to the side. So we're gonna basically do the same thing, but we're gonna do it on a flat griddle. We're gonna cook in the middle, push everything to the side, and show you how easy it is to do it in your own backyard. Now we're already fired up, so let's get this discada going on the griddle. Now before we get this discada recipe going, I just wanna take a minute to talk about today's sponsor, Made In. Made In designs professional quality products for the home cook, and their kitchenware is used in multiple three Michelin star restaurants. And their products are used in over 2,000 other top rated restaurants and hotel groups across America, with over 100,000 five star reviews from both press and customers. Today I'm using the new made in round griddle out here on my patio. Its size and shape help fit comfortably inside your Weber, big green egg, or other circular charcoal grill. This is actually a perfect griddle for a circular grill. And that's because of its unique design has upward facing handles, which allows you to use your grill's lid free of obstruction. I love this feature because it can help control the fire while also adding a delicious smoky flavor to your griddle recipe. The made in round griddle is also heat safe up to 1200 degrees, which makes it perfect for cooking on circular grills or over an open flame. Now I've cooked up breakfast on the made-in rectangular griddle before, and now I'm looking forward to more fluffy pancakes, perfect eggs, and crispy bacon on the round griddle here outside. Y'all can check out the new round carbon steel griddle and made-in's other cookware by using the link in my description to save on your order. Vamonos! A disco is also known as a plow disc. Put a fire under it and do a bunch of cooking on it. Kind of like an outdoor frying pan. Now, my dad was one of the first inventors of the disco, at least in my mind. That was in the early 70s, might have been the late 60s, and I was a wee one. And he would cook outside. He would make all kinds of guisos and fried chicken and things like that. Thanks to technology in modern times, pretty much anybody can cook a discada in their backyard on a simple little grill. First things first, we always start with the meat. First meat going on the griddle is the bacon. The bacon takes a little Little while to cook. We want to make sure it's cooked all the way through because it is pork. It also brings the grease to the griddle to make sure that you have enough oil on there to fry the other meat. This is actually a whole pack of bacon. We use like a medium cut because it cooks a little bit quicker and it doesn't take too long and it lets out just the right amount of oil. So we're going to start letting this cook down right here. We're going to spread it out. So it cooks nice and even. You want a nice hot griddle because meat nowadays always has a lot of water content in it. So that heat will do two things. It'll cook it quick, but it will also help evaporate the water a little bit quicker. So you want plenty of heat in here. The cold bacon brought the temperature down already. That's another reason why you want a hot griddle when you get started. We were at 480 when we got started. So let's get it cooking. Let's let it keep rolling. It's about 10.30 in the morning. I haven't even had breakfast. So this is actually gonna be a delicious brunch for us today. Oh, wait a minute. I did have a taco. You can see this bacon is pretty much halfway cooked, maybe three quarters. So the next thing you do on a discada, we're gonna push it out, make a nice little ring, and then we're gonna add the next meat. Now I made a pile of charcoal right in the center here, so most of my heat's gonna be concentrated right here in the middle where you're gonna add the meat. Next up is the chorizo. There we go. Can you hear the sizzle? Woo, baby, I love that sound. I'm spreading out this chorizo just so that it gets nice and evenly cooked. Look at that bacon sizzling all the way around. That's really, really nice. This chorizo does not take long. It's a sort of a lean chorizo. That's one of the reasons why we do the bacon first, because we need a little oil in here. All right, it's time to get the beef on. Today we're using inside skirts. There are the original fajita. Now, the discada traditionally has pork also. I've done it with pork steaks and pork chops and all kinds of stuff, but we're in Texas. We like beef, so I'm using a lot of fajitas here. And this is right at two pounds of fajitas. If your griddle starts to get a little too hot, that means you got a little too much oxygen, your fire is getting hot, you wanna put your lid on, control your airflow, that will tame your fire down just right. All right, we're gonna season our fajitas and a little bit of wow, you use whatever you like, y'all know this is mine. Now, be a little bit careful, don't over season if you have a salty rub, because remember, the bacon has salt, the chorizo has salt. So don't overdo your seasoning. So I've got a little homemade chile piquin right here. I'm gonna shake a little bit of that on here. It's gonna be really, really good. We're gonna open a well up right here in the middle. It's gonna continue to cook. And I'm gonna go ahead and add my sausage. Probably not all of it. 
I'm putting about two links in here, more or less. That should be just about right. Every once in a while, you, if, depending on how you read your heat and where the grease is on your pan, you may want to rotate it a little bit. Push everything all the way out as far as you can because we still have a couple of more ingredients to put in here. We probably have at least three and a half pounds of meat here. I know it was two pounds of fajitas, two sausages, a whole pack of bacon. We've got a lot of meat on this griddle. You want to be able to feed a lot of people and that's why we've got it full. Let's get a little veggie action going here. So we're gonna spread everything out. We're gonna create a well here in the middle again. We're gonna drop some onions here. Now this is the second part of the traditional discada. It's first the meat and then the veggies. So we've got the onion going here. We have some red bell pepper. We're gonna push the onion out to the edge a little bit. Make another little well here again. We're gonna do the green bell peppers. Now you see how the onion cleaned up the patina on the griddle? All of that flavor is gonna get intermingled and incorporated into the entire dish here. It's going to be super awesome. Do this at home, master it at home first. You will be the MVP of the tailgate. We're going to get our two chile toreados on here. Now they're going to cook right here with a little bit of bacon oil and the other grease that's in here. We're going to add tomato. This is about two Roma tomatoes. We're going to add them right here in the middle. That's going to introduce a little bit of moisture to our discada. Now one of the cool things I like to do is to add a couple of scallions and let them just kind of marinade and all the other juices and cook there. All right, I'm gonna put the lid back on. Remember, we wanna maintain nice, even heat, and we're gonna let everything kind of marinate and continue to cook together. It also allows some of the smoky flavor to develop and cook into the meat as well. Friends, it's time to start mixing it all together. Look at our beautiful Tejano Discada. This is where we bring it all together, mix it all up and make one beautiful, delicious dish. Ooh, ooh. Look at all those gorgeous colors. Tell me this isn't better than wings and hot dogs. Come on now. We're gonna squeeze a little bit of lime. This is a South Texas Tejano thing. Look at that. You hear that sizzle? That's pure deliciousness right there. The other thing we're gonna do, we're gonna add a little bit of cilantro on here and we're gonna stir that in too. Get that all mixed up. I'm ready to make me a delicious taco, but we're missing one more very key ingredient that is a tradition in all these cadas. La cerveza. This is just to keep it all moist, adds a little bit of flavor. You're gonna keep this meat on the griddle normally and you're serving from the griddle. So you wanna keep a little bit of moisture there, keep the discada sorta of kinda of hydrated. Let's give it a final little stir here. Get that beer all incorporated in here. It's all Fantastic. It is time to warm up a couple of tortillas. Traditionally, it's corn tortillas, so we're doing corn. Ooh, yeah, baby. One more, why not? Now, this is just natural fat from the bacon and the beef, so it's all good. Don't be afraid to use oil, friends. You could always eat a salad tomorrow. <laughs> so I'm gonna put the first tortilla in here, put a little bit of meat in here. It's gonna be fantastic, I promise you. And of course, we gotta have a little bit of salsa. You can't have tacos without salsa, man. You gotta have some of this delicious homemade salsa. Besides the salsa, you also get a bite of jalapeno, a bite of onion, all together. Cheers, my friend. Mmm. Oh, baby. Woo wee! Mmm, mmm, mmm. This is fantastic. Incredible. Mmm, mmm. <laughs> Buddy wants to buy it. That was fantastic, man. Just incredible flavors, super delicious. Friends, this was so delicious. I highly encourage you to try this Discada-inspired recipe on the Made In Griddle in your backyard. Y'all want to get some of my rubs? Go to pitmaster.us. Boom!